let's do some fish tank maintenance. Hey guys, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com, and today I want to show you a really easy way to clean box filters and sponge filters, which are the main filtration units that we use here at dansfish.com. And while we're doing that, I'm going to do that on this Pleco tank. These are the L136Bs. Um, they had some sunken belly, they're through their treatment, so wanted to kind of show you an update, how they're doing, which is pretty good. So we'll, we'll catch one, if we can do without stressing them out too much, and show you the progress that their bellies are getting nice and filled out. But before we do, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all that jazz that us YouTubers are always begging you to do, it'd be appreciated. Let's get to it. So usually, a box filter should look kind of like this. It's nice and white, it's not all plugged up with detritus and mold and organics. It's pretty nice and clean, but... With plecos, they quickly look like this. Plecos eat so much. There are about 16 four inch plecos in here. So they're big. They each eat a complete algae wafer or a couple Hikari sinking carnivore pellets every day. So they produce a lot of waste. So while most of the box filters in the fish room are nice and clean, these guys are all gunked up already. So I need to get in there to clean it. The way we do that is we detach the airline here to start and I'm of the mind that quick is better than perfect. I've got a, a lot of aquariums, and so I want it to be fast. So I'm just gonna take this tub here and go like that and catch it. Now, it's gonna take a while for all this gunky water in here to drain out, so I'm gonna leave it in there, and while it's there, I'm gonna take this lid. See that algae growing on the lid? And I'm gonna go scrub it out. All right, so I just went to this sink and scrubbed these out. Um, just to keep the light coming through. I don't mind algae, but when you get so much gunked up there, it keeps the light from coming down. So, I don't like that. And then the, the other thing that we do while we're waiting for that to drain is, I just scrub the ledges around here. There's a lot of stuff that can build up on the ledges where your lid sits, especially right in this corner where the bubbles from the filter come up. And uh, all kinds of gunk can grow up there. And that stuff can really smell after a little while. So while you're cleaning, just take a minute and get those gunky areas scrubbed off. Okay, now it's been a minute, so all that water that was in here is drained out, and now I can take this floss out. And this is gonna be gross, right? Plecos create a lot of waste, so this is gunky. The reason we wanna do this is there is still enough space in there that, um, we can get decent flow through it. So it's still able to collect more gunk. It's not like totally clogged. But as it gets more gunk, the, its efficiency drops. But the main reason is, even though this filter set, the sponge filter and the box filter and the plants and everything else in here can handle all the ammonia, we want to get these organics out. All this brown gunky stuff is all organics that are decomposing. So even though the aquarium can handle the ammonia, what grows on those organics, what helps create a lot of that ammonia are a bunch of little microorganisms, a bunch of protozoans, a lot of bacteria, tiny little critters, which are not a problem until their population explodes because there's organic matter in the tank for them to eat on. And once their population explodes, then they can make your fish sick. So even if you test for ammonia and nitrite and nitrate and it's all good, what you might not know is that you have a whole bunch of organics decomposing in your tank and all these little micro populations are exploding. A lot of these are harmless to your fish until their population explodes and then suddenly your fish will get sick. So we want to keep the organics under control. We don't want so many organics in there actively decaying, being eaten by protozoans and little critters, that we can get their population high enough to make your fish sick. So it's good to get those organics out. That's one reason we do this. In these box filters, I always find it ironic that they call it a box filter when it's like a circle, a cylinder. <laughs> but these box filters do a great job of filtering out the organics um, because if you use this stuff, so this is just filter floss, it really is this polyfill, and it's this stuff right here. 
I buy it by the big old box. I just get it at Walmart. It's used to like stuff pillows and quilts and crafts and it doesn't cost very much at all. So I'm just going to take a new thing of poly filter and stick it in here. I want to show you a trick. This space between where the air goes in and the air comes out can be used to help keep this poly fill down where you want it. So I squeeze it when I put it in and I force it a section of it between there nice and tight so when I stick it down it's not going to come back up this stuff wants to float so you kind of pinch it down there between these two and it holds the rest of it down the other thing is you don't want it so high that it covers these slits because those slits you want the water to come in those slits and the slits on the top and settle over the entire surface of this if you cover those slits then all the little organics and uh, detritus and waste get stuck in those slits because it can't pass further than them because the polyfill's right there. So it'll clog a lot quicker. So stick it down right be below those slits, put your lid back on. Now, there's still a little algae and grime on there, but I don't really care. I don't scrub that off unless it gets so much algae growing on it that I can't actually see the state of the floss in the filter. Then I'll scrub it out just so I, I can keep an eye on it. So once that's done, you lift it back up here, reattach your air, and I like to put them in sideways so they fill without like gurgling out a bunch, and then putting them upright and setting them down. I just find that's the best way to refill them. If you don't do that, you just get all this gurgling coming up, and that can force the floss up on you, and you don't want that. So that's how we do it. You also need some marbles or rocks down there just to add some weight so the entire unit doesn't float up. So that's uh, the box filter. Then we're gonna do the sponge filter. Now, again, on the sponge filter, I would rather be quick than perfect. So I don't worry about getting a little bit of the grunge in the sponge in the water column. I just lift it up and I throw it right into this bucket and a little bit of the stuff is gonna fall out and kind of make the water a little cloudy. But these filters, the box filters and the sponge filters are so good at catching that stuff that within, oh, an hour or so, it's going to be clear again. So I don't mind if a little bit of it comes out. I just go like that. So you can see that a little bit of it did escape the sponge filter. And by the way, I use chorus sponge filters because they don't clog as quickly. I'm not like a retail store where people are in all the time. I mean, I, I am open to the public and they do come over, but they understand that this is more about efficiency and health of the fish than about looks is kind of how I run this. It's not a, a beautiful little fish store. Um, so I don't mind if there's a little bit of that. It's going to settle up quickly anyway. So then I just take this, pull these out. Now you can get a whole bunch of nasty stuff in here. At the very bottom, at the base of this, it's just, that's where all the nasty stuff settles. So you do want to take some precautions to get that out. So let's get that out, because yuck. All right, so that's a lot cleaner now. It was full of this black gunk. The other thing is, you check your air to make sure that this hole where the air goes through is nice and clear and it is right now if it's not then I have to take like a twisty tie or something like that and stick it in there and clean it out but right now it's still nice and clear so it's not impeding the airflow then I just take water from the tank in this little container and I dump it onto the sponge filter and you do that because you don't want to use tap water. Tap water has chlorine or chloramine in it. Usually, if you're on a well, maybe it doesn't matter. But for most of us that live in a city, um, you don't want to kill all the nice nitrifying bacteria population in your sponge filter. So you use the tank water to clean it. I guess if you have like a whole house uh, carbon block that removes chlorine and stuff, maybe it's not that big of a deal. But um, then you just take this and you just squeeze the heck out of it to get all the grunge out of it. All right, that's round one. Now, these are plecos, so that is nasty when you do plecos. So, we're gonna do it twice, just to make sure that we get enough of that stuff out of it. Plecos just creates so much waste. So, a couple of these, we'll squeeze that out. Oh yeah, this is, this is much better. 
So when I squeeze it the first time, I can literally feel like the sludge and stuff in it coming out. Now I can't. Now I can feel, even though the water is still a little nasty, it's not nearly as nasty as the other one, and I can feel that that's nice and clean now. So I'm not worried about perfection. I don't need the water to come out completely clear. I just want to get those organics out and make sure that this isn't so full of stuff that air and water can't flow through it. Put it back. Here's our little airlift. We're just going to put the airline back on. What the tanks usually look like are this. So, if you have a pleco or like a bushy nose pleco or an algae eater or something, they keep all that detritus off the bottom because they'll kick it up and it'll get eaten up, basically sucked up by the sponge filter in this box filter. And so you get a tank that pretty much has most of the organics in these filters. So if you just clean your filters every now and then um, in a setup like this, you'll be fine. And the secret is some kind of organism, bushy you nose plecos work great, some of these algae eaters work pretty good, to keep the stuff from settling on the bottom and staying there. A school of Corydoras works really well. And even with sand, even in a tank like this, that has a bunch of sand in the bottom, it still stays clean because I've got a bushy nose pleco in here and he just goes around and stirs everything up from the stand that gets sucked into those filters. So I need to change those filters, you can tell they're a little bit brown. Well, they're real brown. But it's keeping the rest of the tank pretty free from organics. I found that with a sponge filter and a box filter, I can control the organics in the tank really well and keep them from getting um, building up to the point you start having problems. So if you remember, we did a video on um, using vodka in the fish room. Use vodka is a binder to make sure that medicines like praziquantel that don't readily dissolve in water don't just sit at the surface and float. If you mix it with a little grain alcohol and then put it in the aquarium, it's much more efficient. So we use these plecos, these uh, L136Bs, as the example of that because they were suffering from sunken belly. Sunken belly in plecos is, is lethal. If you don't get it treated, they'll just waste away and gradually die on you. These guys are doing a lot better. They're through their treatment. We, we did, well, you can watch that video, but basically Prazi, Quantol, Metronidazole, some ICX just to clear up anything on the outside, and then they've had some Levamisol treatments as well. So I wanna net one real quick and show you its belly to, to show you how they're doing. These, these are, um, L136Bs, I don't know if they have a common name that is actually common enough that everyone would recognize it, but um, they're about four inches right now, and their belly, check that out, that is so much better. This was all sunken in before, just completely emaciated, but they, they recovered, they're eating, they're gaining weight, so they still have some fattening to do, but they're ready to go, they're, they're healthy, they're, they're doing fine. All right, so that's the video, just showing you how we do maintenance here. It's pretty quick and easy. Um, we talk a lot about ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, but I don't think we talk enough about organics because we gotta keep those under control too or we'll have disease problems that blow up on us. So just remember that as you set up whatever tank you're setting up, find a way to keep the organics under control. All right, that should take care of these guys for a little while. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy this. We do a live stream. If you're a total fish geek and you want more, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Dance Fish YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to join us. It's free, you just show up, we talk about fish, we answer questions. We kind of just geek out about fish, really. That's all for now. Until next time, have a good one, bye-bye.